Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Hi there, good morning. It is Tuesday, April 4th. Thanks for joining us. Uh, starting off okay in the 70s, but it got so hot yesterday, I made the mistake of running <laughs> during the hot temperatures. I guess it was almost 90. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm not ready for this. Well, be prepared to run even faster today, Steph. Uh -oh. Let's go outside right <laughs> now. Actually, we're checking in with Justin Horn. Yeah. And you're, you say we're approaching uh, near record territory later today. Yeah, 93 is the record this afternoon. That was set back in 1893, way back when. Uh, we're going to get close to that. I think 92 forecast die, we could be in range of that record. The good news here is, Stephanie, you can take a run tomorrow and it will feel much, much better. We've got some changes. Cold front heads our way tomorrow morning. So let's look at the numbers. 92, the forecast. Uh, there it is. The record in 93 is set back in 1893, but tomorrow 79. That's the change. Morning storms and then turning windy and cooler. Uh, so finally, finally some relief and it gets even better beyond that because we get some good rain chances. Right now we've got mostly cloudy skies, 72, dew point at 68, and a south southeasterly breeze at 16, already gusting to 24. It'll be a breezy day. Uh, we'll see those gusts pretty consistent around 20 to 25. Just got the pollen count in. Oak, still in the high category. It's 6,270, but it is down from yesterday's number. Uh, molds jump up, though, uh, to 800. They're in the moderate category. And pecan and hackberry are both low. KSAT 12-hour forecast. 82 noontime, mostly cloudy. We'll call it partly cloudy this afternoon. 92 is your high temperature and then falling down into the 80s tonight before that front. Uh, arrives. We're going to take a look at the timing there. We'll let you know when the storms will move in and move out. And uh, we'll also look at potential rainfall totals as we get into Thursday and Friday. That's coming up in just a few minutes. But now we toss it over to Stephen with an update on your morning commute. Hey, Justin, good morning. Well, thankfully, things are winding down for the most part, but we actually actually had a few issues out there during morning rush. You can see a flashing lights out there on the shoulder lane of Loop 410. This is actually in the westbound lanes of Cherry Ridge. Earlier, Texod actually reported this as a major crash, and it was in the westbound lanes, causing a pretty significant slowdown for drivers. So what we are seeing now is a tail end of it. Obviously, we still have those flashing lights out there. Be sure to move over or slow down. But the crash was reported again in the westbound lanes, and you see it right there on our map. We have a little bit of a buildup. It's nothing too severe at this time, but uh, really what we're going to see now are some of those residual slowdowns. So we're going to keep a very close eye on this area as the morning does commute does continue, but also want to bring you down over here to 281 South Bend at Olmos Drive. A new crash has been reported and this one not in a really good area. 281 Southbound is a very heavily traveled route. So if you are heading in the southbound lanes, maybe toward the downtown area, watch out before you get to Olmos Drive. You will see a crash there that's causing a pretty big delay, but giving you a wide look at the metropolitan area. Some of uh, some relief here on the roads. A little bit more green out there, so uh, take it easy. Again, we're going to watch these areas very closely. Looks like our uh, first responder is still out there. I believe that is a tow truck, but other areas that we are going to watch closely do include 281, uh, where we have a pretty big slowdown that's being reported right now. But just for now, keep your eyes on the road as well, guys. Thank you, Stephen. Some developing news this morning. U.S. forces have killed a senior leader of ISIS. According to U.S. Central Command, it happened during a drone strike in northwestern Syria yesterday. The ISIS uh, leader was identified as Khalid Aid Ahmad al Jabouri, and he was said to be responsible for planning future attacks in Europe. In a statement from the military, they say his death will temporarily disrupt the organization's ability to plot external attacks. The strike was the latest by the U.S. military to kill a top official with the extremist group that once controlled large parts of Iraq and Syria. And here's today's Nine at Nine. Later today, former President Donald Trump will surrender on criminal charges in New York. A judge has ruled that no video cameras will be allowed in court, but five still photographers can be inside to take photos before the arraignment starts. Once Trump leaves the courthouse, he will return to Mar-a-Lago, where he plans to speak later tonight. We will be airing all of this as it happens, so you can watch it right here on KSAT 12. Students in Tennessee are demanding lawmakers protect them from school shootings a week after a shooter took the lives of three children and three adults. Hundreds gathered at the state capitol yesterday to demand stricter gun laws. The governor of Tennessee is expanding his school safety plan, but not by adding gun restrictions. The FDA says the maker of a brand of eye drops linked to an outbreak of bacterial infections failed to follow safety protocols. Some of the observations may include a, quote, manufacturing process that lacked assurance of product sterility, end quote, specifically for batches manufactured between December of 2020 and April of 2022 and shipped to the U.S. 
The FDA says the inspection is ongoing. President Biden approved a major disaster declaration for California to help with the aftermath from a series of winter storms that hit the state in late February. The declaration will make certain Californians eligible for support like housing assistance, food aid, counseling, and medical and legal services. Small chickens are now in higher demand due to the popularity of chicken sandwiches at places like KFC and Chick-fil-A. Birds that weigh only about four pounds are reportedly more tender and more flavorful than their bigger counterparts. Now that demand is driving up costs for restaurant operators. The cost for small chicken boneless breasts is now $2.50. Disney is upping the ante in its fight with the state of Florida over control of the land around Walt Disney World. Disney CEO Bob Iger is calling moves by Governor Ron DeSantis anti-business and anti-Florida. He also announced plans to invest $17 billion in the Florida property over the next 10 years. There are more cars available on lots across the country as supply chain issues ease, and that increased selection is helping boost sales for most car makers in the first quarter. GM, Nissan, and Hyundai are all posting double-digit sales gains. Companies like Walmart and Amazon are now investing in machines that can make cardboard packages that will fit what's being shipped. That could cut down on waste from big boxes being used to send out small items. For the fifth time in their school's history, the University of Connecticut men's team won a national title. They dominated San Diego State after a back and forth start to the game and would go on to win by 17 points. The final score, 76-59. This is Dan Hurley's first NCAA title as head coach. And that's today's Nine at Nine. Uh, speaking of, any morning headlines, some college students taking their championship celebration a little too far, and your tax refund may be a little lighter this year. Plus, NASA is sending four astronauts on a trip around the moon and an emotional reunion thanks to modern science. David Sears is here with all these stories. Good morning. This has to do with that earthquake back in Turkey in February. Oh, Remember yeah. That? Yeah, so this is a great story. We'll have that for you in just a second. But first, let's start with this. Students on the Yukon campus giving up a little study time to celebrate. They were celebrating that big win from last night. Huskies beating San Diego State. Apparently carrying up some stuff on campus was in the celebration syllabus. Didn't have that class. The students took to the streets. There was some damage, mostly smashed windows. They stole some signs. They tore down some light poles. Don't be tearing up the campus and complain about your tuition going up. There were some arrests. The total should be released sometime today. Hey, when you check your bank account for your tax refund, don't be shocked if it's not as much as you thought it was going to be. The government has paid back $172 billion, but the IRS says the average refund dropped from about $3,200 to $2,900. One reason, support like child care credits during the pandemic have expired. The amount may be down, but the number of people getting a refund is up. 59 million getting a check back from Uncle Sam. That is up 3% from last year. So far, 80 million Americans have filed their 2022 tax return. If you haven't filed, you have until Tuesday the 18th to get it done. You need to concentrate on that, get it done, because you know that's the week that Fiesta starts, so you don't want to be thinking about Fiesta yet. Get your tax return done and then get ready to party with us starting the Thursday. Fiesta. Four astronauts headed back to the moon. The Artemis II is set to blast off in November of 2024. The four astronauts are NASA's Reed Wiseman, Victor Glover, and Christina Koch, and Jeremy Hansen of the Canadian Space Agency. Their crew is going to circle the moon in a loop, and that loop will be so big that it will actually take the astronauts further from Earth than anyone has ever traveled before. The mission will last about 10 days. Three words that we keep saying in this Artemis program. We are going, and I want everybody to say it on three. One, two, three. We are going. We are going. Pretty exciting. NASA says Artemis II is paving the way for Artemis III. Artemis III is going to put a woman and a person of color on the moon. It'll be the first moon landing since 1972 with the Apollo program. A target launch for the Artemis III is planned for 2025, but then you got to take into account some delays. So you're probably looking at 2026 or maybe even a little later than that. And talk about your emotional reunion back in February, that earthquake that devastated Turkey, just ripped that country apart and tore a baby from her mother, literally tore him apart. Mom was pulled from the rubble, taken to the hospital and survived. Then five days later, the baby was found unharmed, but no one knew who she was. Her father and brother were killed. Mom's in the hospital, so that just made things more difficult. However, DNA tests helped identify the two and actually brought 
mom and baby back together. What a sweet reunion that is after everything they went through, huh? No doubt about that. Wow. So DNA finds a baby and a mom separated. Love it. Science. Yep. Thank you, David. All right. Right now we're at 908, 73 degrees still ahead on GMSA at 9. Controversy within the Texas VFW. Our case and investigates team looks into the concerns raised by a, a San Antonio Post commander that may have gotten him stripped of his position. Plus, Love lives here. Good morning, I'm Max Massey. We are talking about National Donate Life Month, how you can step up and help out. Let's look out there with live cam. Yeah, we can survive the 70s because we're expecting the 90s or at least close to it today again. Those clouds are going to literally burn off. They are, yeah. quite literally. And uh, yesterday there was a little bit of a breeze, but not a lot, so it just mm -hmm. felt so hot. There'll be a little more of a breeze today, so we're, we're trying to find some positives. And the other bit of good news is we've got a cold front coming through tomorrow, so we can say goodbye to the heat, at least for a little while. Uh, let's take a look at some stats rainfall-wise, and I showed this earlier this morning on GMSA. Uh, but I, I always think this, these numbers are, are, are pretty fascinating. So how long has it been since we've had a half an inch of rain at the airport? 61 days. Now this is within a 24 hour period, so this is not a perfect stat, but it, I think it does really kind of paint the picture. It's been 222 days since we've had an inch or more at the airport and 537 days since uh, we've had two inches or more. You got to go back to October 13th, 2021. Why do I bring this up? Well, there is the potential for some good rain as we get into Thursday and Friday, maybe up over an inch. Maybe we can erase these stats and reset them back to zero. That's my hope. Uh, we'll see how things play out going forward. For right now, though, it is still warm and humid. 72, cloudy, dew point is at 68, and we do have a good breeze. South, southeast, Julie at 16. Case at 12 hour forecast, 82 at noon. Mostly cloudy, and then partly cloudy this afternoon. We're up around 92 for the high. There is a very, very small chance of a shower or a storm popping up, but just like yesterday, uh, it probably will not happen. 86 degrees at 8 p.m., 83 at 9 p.m. Dew point trend. So yes, humid today. Our front comes through. The dew points drop off. So tomorrow's a dry day. We get the gusty winds. That's going to bring a fire threat into play uh, for just tomorrow because humidity makes a comeback Thursday and Friday, and that leads to our rain chances. As we look at the big picture here, Water vapor uh, showing where our low is out here over parts of Utah and Colorado. And then you got the Pacific moisture streaming out, out, out ahead of this storm system, which is very large. And it's going to bring a variety of weather, uh, including blizzard like conditions up to the north, gusty winds here across Texas, and some severe weather looks like later tonight. We do have a fire weather watch in effect for parts of our area, which means it could be upgraded to a red flag warning tomorrow. We mentioned the dry air, but also the gusty winds and as dry as it has been, there will be a fire threat tomorrow. Red flag warnings are already in effect for West Texas, along with high wind warnings where they'll get some strong winds today out ahead of that storm system. Now we got to talk about the severe weather. So there's a dry line that will uh, march east as well. This shows some activity along the dry line, but again, I don't think we see much. Uh, there could be some stronger storms later this evening up to the north across parts of Iowa. As the front moves in, though, that's when you really start to see stuff blossom. This is 5 a.m. tomorrow morning. Good chance of severe weather in this area here up across parts of Arkansas and Missouri. Uh, but even here, we could see some storms along the front. This is a severe weather risk. The highest risk is going to be up across Iowa and Arkansas uh, later today and, and into tomorrow morning. Earlier, the Storm Prediction Center did have San Antonio within the risk. Now they have us just outside of the risk. Either way, I think along the front, there could be a, a couple of storms that uh, could be on the strong side. This is tomorrow morning, 7 a.m., 30% chance of rain as the front comes through. And then that rain pushes south and east and the drier air works in briefly. But then as we get into Thursday, the moisture starts to make a comeback and we get some disturbances rolling through and then you'll start to see more widespread rain. So this is 7 a.m. Thursday morning showers and a few storms and then uh, good coverage I think as we get into the day on Thursday and again on Friday we're going to call for a 70 percent chance of rain how much rain potentially one to two inches as I said that would help with our current situation the higher numbers will be east lower numbers off to the west so here's how it looks in the seven day forecast 79 tomorrow 30 percent chance of morning storms then a 70 percent chance of rain Thursday and Friday lots of clouds much much cooler 
Highs only in the low 60s. 71 Saturday. Easter Sunday looks like things quiet down. Partly cloudy, just a small chance of a storm and a high of 79. Guys. Thank, Thank you, Justin. April is National Donate Life Month. It was established in 2003 to encourage Americans to register as organ donors. It also honors those who have saved and enhanced lives through the gift donation. Max Massey joins us live from the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center with more. Good morning, Max. Good morning, guys. I want to show you what we're looking at here. So this is a garden honoring those whose donations have saved countless lives. Now, you can see the pinwheels. You can see the memorials. We're joined here with Ashley. So, Ashley, why is National Donate Life Month so important? So National Donate Life Month in April helps raise awareness about organ, eye, and tissue don donations. And it also helps us remember those who have given the gift of life. And how can people step up and help out? The most important thing you can do is reg register your decision to be an organ, eye, and tissue donor by going to DonateLifeTexas.org. And we're standing here in front of the garden. What events do you guys have throughout the month? We'll have several events next week. You can go to our website, SouthTexasBlood.org, if you would like to participate. We have things like a chalk day. We'll have a rock painting day. If you paint a rock for your loved one, you'll be able to put it in the garden. Um, the most important event we have is on April 29th, we are going to be doing a garden replanting. As you can see, there's a lot of weeds. We want to <laughs> make it a little bit more fresh. Um, and that is also on our website, SouthTexasBlood.org. Now, last year, we told the story of David Menchaca. Now, what are some of these stories that you know can help inspire others? So every we get a lot of stories of folks who have passed away and they decided to be organ eye and tissue donors and those stories are really powerful and inspiring. We actually have a wall of heroes on our website, SouthTexasBlood.org. If you'd like to read more about David as well, he is on on the wall of heroes. Um, those stories just inspire us to you know keep doing what we do, spread awareness, and and hopefully help save lives. And guys, obviously, we are outside the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center. I have to talk about blood donations. So, Ashley, what does the, the current supply look at like right now? So, today we have a two-day supply. Um, o types are critical. So, if you're O positive or O negative, please, please consider coming out. In April, because it's Fiesta and we love our donors, we uh, do have we our Fiesta medal. It's extra big this year because <laughs> donors have extra big hearts. And uh, when you donate in April, you will get one of these medals while supplies last. Guys, I just want to put this in perspective. Can I, can I, I will give it back. I promise I'll give okay, it back. Okay. Look at this. They're not messing around. It's like go a big or CBS go home. And it is really Max. cool. So, <laughs> I, know. I know it's wow. insane. Actually, same color too. All right. So, so show us, I mean, this is like, there that's we go. Awesome. Interactive too. Yeah, you can choose oh, your, that's cool. Your wow. Take care. If you're A, O positive, O negative, this is kind of <laughs> kind of not working right now, but yeah. Guys, I want to show you my favorite part. Because it's so heavy, they actually have it like double enforced in yeah. the back to oh, make sure yes. that yeah. it stays out. Triple enforced too, because you got the pin up here too. <laughs> right. That is fantastic. And, uh, and I will say, accepting walk-ins this morning, I was talking to Roger through the morning, and he wanted me to call out a few people from KSAP. We got Lee Waldman, Sarah Costa, and our own Justin Horn. He's calling you out. He's saying he hasn't seen you in a while. Okay. Come on out. Donate blood. Help save lives. I'll do it. Time to go back. I'll do it. All right. Cool. Yep. <laughs> Thank you, Max. Thank All you, right. Max. Well, that answers the questions. Can Fiesta medals get bigger? They did. <laughs> they yes, can. They, can. they got a they lot can. bigger. They look nice, too. 919, 73 degrees. When we come back, our Courtney Friedman gives us an inside look at the safety measures being taken at the Texas Biomedical Research Institute, which houses some of the most dangerous diseases in the world. The debate on whether the COVID-19 virus was leaked from a lab in China or not has labs worldwide evaluating their safety protocols. Courtney Friedman got a rare inside look at the safety protocols at Texas Biomedical Research Institute, which studies and houses some of the most dangerous diseases in the world. Research labs have four levels of biosafety, four being maximum containment, housing deadly agents like Ebola, Marburg, and Nipah virus. Level three labs contain tuberculosis, equine encephalitis virus, and the SARS-CoV viruses that cause COVID-19. Level two contain viruses like Zika. Texas Biomedical Research Institute in San Antonio has all of those levels. Our role here is to make sure we don't contaminate the environment. We don't uh, bring let anything out of our facilities 
while we do this very important research um, to make sure that we find a cure, find a vaccine. Dr. Zhang Ming Wang, who also goes by Anthony, is in charge of all safety protocols at Texas Biomed, a serious job that starts with training, sometimes taking people years to work up through the lab levels. Part of that involves personal protective equipment, or PPE. I am wearing PPE for a level three lab right now. That includes this air purifying system, which then travels up through that hose into this mask, which keeps contaminants from getting in. In level four labs, you need 100% separation between the scientist and the pathogen, meaning positive pressure suits that need to be checked every single time they're worn. Making sure they check every nook and cranny, making sure there's no holes and, and any compromise of the suit. The lab equipment is also designed to keep dangerous particles away, like this biosafety cabinet where most work is done. Um, so the goal is to make sure you minimize your movement. Here in the training lab, Wong brought an instrument generating smoke to simulate how the machine keeps particles from already. moving through the air. There we go. See how quickly it clears? Those cabinets contain two enormous filters. Multiple layers, um, and you can see how deep it is. We use this as our training to show people what the filter looks like. All these protocols allow researchers to push the boundaries of science while keeping their community safe. Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. 925, 73 degrees. There is more ahead on GMSA at 9. Including our latest case at Investigate story that looks into some controversy within the Texas VFW. Why local post commander says he was stripped of his position after he raised concerns about one of the organization's state leaders. Plus, what these yellow stickers on cars mean and where you could start seeing them. We'll explain when we come back. And welcome back. It's 929. Let's look out there with Transguy looking over it. This is Highway 281 South at almost and you can see those vehicles pulled over off to the side of the road, causing that to be slow going at this time. We'll keep you updated. Today, former President Donald Trump will become the first president, current or former, to surrender on criminal charges. It's believed there could be about two dozen counts, including felonies stemming from hush money payments in the final weeks of the 2016 election. ABC's Morgan Norwood is at the criminal courthouse in New York City covering this historic case and gives us the timeline for today's arraignment. This morning, one of the nation's busiest courts will receive its highest profile defendant yet. Former President Donald Trump set to surrender on criminal charges. Trump waving as he arrived in New York Monday afternoon. The streets blocked off to make way for his motorcade. It's the same convoy that will escort him to the courthouse later today. The Secret Service will deliver him to the court to be arrested. He won't be handcuffed. But what's still unknown? If Trump will have a mugshot taken? And will it be made public? Also unknown? Whether the judge will place a gag order on the case. I think there's a good chance the judge will issue some sort of gag order because the last thing the court, or frankly anybody wants, is tainting of the, the jury pool. Last night on Fox, Trump's lawyer disputed that. Can't be. Won't happen. Um, I don't believe anyone's even looking for that. Trump will stand before a judge for arraignment on some two dozen charges, including felonies. The charges stem from hush money payments to porn actress Stormy Daniels weeks before the pivotal 2016 presidential election and allegedly disguised as ordinary legal expenses. For days, Trump has lashed out at Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg and in the hours before boarding for New York, attacking the presiding judge Juan Marchand as a Trump-hating judge who would never give him a fair trial. Claims Trump's own lawyer would not repeat. No, I don't believe the judge is biased. I mean, the president's entitled to his own opinion. Trump has called for supporters to protest his arrest. And here in New York, the city is on alert. Mayor Eric Adams with a stark warning. Our message is clear and simple. Control yourselves. New York City is our home, not a playground for your misplaced anger. Now, there will be no video cameras inside the courtroom while this arraignment takes place, but the judge did allow five still photographers inside to take photos before the hearing starts. Now, after all of this is said and done, Trump is expected to hop back on a plane to Mar-a-Lago, where he will make a speech later tonight. Morgan Norwood, ABC News, New York. Again, we'll be broadcasting all this as it happens from Trump arriving in court to his remarks later tonight in Florida. Make sure to have our case set app downloaded and then the push notifications turned on so you can get alerts about when this is happening if you're at work or on the go. Let's go back outside with live cam on your Tuesday morning. Going to warm up fast today and those spring calves will be quite warm in today's sunshine, won't they? 
Uh, there's no doubt about it. You can see the sun starting to pop out. But let me show you a picture here on our KSA Connect. This comes out of Hondo, and this is Elsie. So very cute. Uh, March baby is what they say. Very photogenic, Elsie. Uh, she is for sure. Uh, we appreciate the pictures as always. Any of the any animals, pets you have, share them with us on uh, KSA Connect, and we'll we'll try to show them. Good looking calf there. Well, okay, let's uh, go outside for you. We do have the sun trying to pop out. Here's some of the weather headlines. We have a cold front arriving and that is going to be here early tomorrow morning. There's going to be a few storms with the front and then it turns windy as well behind this boundary. Soaking rain, it's still in the forecast. That arrives Thursday and Friday, so that's what we have to look forward to. In the meantime, 72 and cloudy, dew point at 68, south southeast Julie winds at 16 and gusty. Noontime 82 and we top out at 92 this afternoon, partly cloudy, humid. Those winds will stay with us most of the day. We're going to time out some of that rainfall and uh, talk more about the extended forecast in Easter weekend too. coming up here in just a couple minutes, guys. Justin, thank you so much. If you live in the shirts area, you might start to see these yellow stickers on the back of windshields of cars there. It's all part of a new program that could save a person's life. RJ Marcus tells us how it works and why one mother says it could be the difference between life and death for her daughter. Time is of the essence. You know, we're taught that in the very beginning, like time is all you have. Paramedic Amy Anderson knows every minute matters when it comes to responding to an emergency. It's why she wanted to bring the Yellow Dot program to shirts and surrounding cities. For us, it's to kind of help not only notify all the first responders, fire, EMS, police, um, that there's patients that have these higher level of acuity needs. People with serious medical conditions enroll in the program and get this yellow sticker to put on the back of their car. That lets paramedics know during an emergency, there is a yellow pamphlet inside that vehicle with that person's picture, medical history, and vital information. The purpose is to allow these pamphlets to speak for these people when they're unable to do so themselves. Tabitha McCollum enrolled her 11-year-old daughter in the program. Her daughter is a pediatric cancer and stroke survivor. To hear that there's a program locally that can give us peace of mind and time, it's not something you can buy. She says it also gives her daughter an extra sense of security. This lets them know ahead of time what they need from you so that they're not scared or afraid or nervous of what's happening. Shirts is the first city in our area to introduce the Yellow Dot program. Tabitha hopes it sticks around to get emergency care faster to her daughter and those in need. Just to have this pamphlet to know that I have peace of mind of I can hand this over and you can take her and go literally could be her life. This program is free to enroll and open to any age groups with individuals that are suffering from advanced to serious medical conditions. Reporting in shirts, RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. Thank you. Well, our latest KSAT investigates story getting a lot of attention online. Controversy within the Texas Veterans of Foreign Wars, better known as VFW. A San Antonio Post commander was stripped of his position last year after raising concerns about one of the organization's state leaders. William Smith says the man's felony conviction for intoxication manslaughter should have disqualified him from being a state officer. Instead, as Case Hat investigates Dylan Collier learned, it's Smith who is now banned. William Smith is a retired command sergeant major in the U.S. Army who served three combat tours as a Green Beret. BFW Post 8541 on Austin Highway is his home away from home. At least it was. If the organization doesn't change, the culture of this organization doesn't change. It's not the nonprofit for me. For Smith, strife within an organization that claims it fosters camaraderie among veterans of overseas conflicts began in 2021 after he learned that fellow vet Ben Lawrence was in line to become quartermaster of the Texas VFW, essentially its chief financial officer. Lawrence, just months earlier, had pled guilty to intoxication manslaughter for a fatal 2016 crash in Amarillo. Even while accused of killing someone in a drunk driving accident, Lawrence's bio shows he was able to rise through the ranks of the Texas VFW. Smith, a retired San Antonio police patrol sergeant, said Lawrence being installed in the powerful position convinced him to run for quartermaster. He confirms he voiced his concerns to leadership and even tried speaking to Lawrence at an event, encouraging him to step aside until he completed a sentence that included five years probation and no alcohol during that time period. I told Ben, I said, you should take your five years, be a stellar citizen. Internal VFW documents paint a different picture. 
as multiple witnesses said they heard Smith call Lawrence a murderer. Smith emphatically denies the accusation. Did he kill somebody? Yes. Murder somebody? No. But the damage was done. In August, Smith learned that he'd been stripped of his post commander position, pending an investigation into whether he had publicly discredited Lawrence and targeted him with harassment. Smith felt he should have prevailed in a subsequent hearing in Leander in November, but didn't, even after Lawrence admitted to drinking while on probation. Have you had alcoholic drinks since you've been on probation? Uh, I have, but I did tell you that's between me and my probation officer. A Potter County adult probation official told KSAT Lawrence has nothing in his file in terms of probation violations, and no motions to revoke his community supervision have been filed in his case. Smith's final punishment, a ban on holding elected or appointed office through June 2025, a gut punch he's having trouble coping with. And they've taken an organization that I truly believed in and destroyed it. That's, can't sum it up any more than that. For Case That Investigates, I'm Dylan Collier. And Smith is appealing his leadership suspension and he's hoping to get it overturned. We tried to speak with leadership from the Texas VFW, even the national headquarters, multiple times. We've never heard back. Lawrence's criminal defense attorney did not return a call from us either. Time now, 938 and about 73 degrees out there. You're watching GMSA at 9. Tiffany Huertas joins us now with a look at what she has coming up. Good morning. It's all about capturing a moment. That's what a local artist did, and now his art pieces are on display at a local exhibit. The stories behind these incredible, colorful images. Next. Welcome back, 942. A San Antonio artist is getting another chance to showcase his art pieces after his first exhibit was canceled due to COVID. Tiffany Wetas takes us to Central Cultural Atlan with a new exhibit called Moments in Time. Good morning, Tiffany. Tell us more about it. Good morning, Mark and Stephanie. A really incredible exhibit here. It's all about capturing the moment. And during the summer months, what is better than paletas, right? And this image right here just captures that. Check it out. This is called El Paletero con Botas with the boots. And this is going to be my best friend during the summer. Now, the artist, Joe Lopez, he captures all these special moments in our communities, family, friends, strangers. Good morning, Joe. Good Tell morning, us about Tiffany. this exhibit. How incredible does it feel to have it open now? Well, it's good to have it. A uh, solo exhibit after three and a half years of COVID. I was supposed to have a show and, and COVID hit and it was canceled for for three and a half years. You know, I've just been painting and, and you know, my paintings are about life and Navarro. So. Tell us about that. Well, this is a, you know, we, we Mexicanos, we work hard, we party hard. <laughs> and uh, this man, you know, this isn't easy work, this is hard work. And now I wanted to show his tools, you know, the, the sweat on his back. And over here, if, if you, I sometimes add a little something, it's a little red bird, like if it's his mentor or his mother or his father, um, you know, coming to see and see if he's doing the job well. The you know, special details. The little things that some people don't see, they don't notice. And the nopaleras, well, you know, during Lent, we like to eat uh, nopalitos. And here my wife and her sister and some friends were cleaning nopalitos, nopalitos in the backyard of my gallery. And over here, there, there's just so many different experiences that you see in the community, and then you put them right here into the art. Well, you know, I, like I say, the barrio is where I grew up, and that's what I know, and that's what I enjoy painting. You know, there's like there's a saying, don't forget where you came from, and don't, que no te olvides donde venitas. You know, I remember the, like this little horse, it was so beautiful. I always, every time we went to the kitty land or to an amusement park, I'd all be fascinated with the, 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 the beauty of how the, the horse was put together. I was recently there, and this is still magical, an experience <laughs> for the kids, for the whole family. How does it feel for you to have this exhibit here at Centro well, Cultural? You know, Centro Cultural has been around for a long time, and they've been promoting our culture, the Mexican-American culture, and the Mexican culture for so many years. And uh, they uh, give artists an opportunity to show their work, and you know, I've known Malena for a long time, and uh, 
she's uh, she asked me if hey you know you want to have a show come on down I'm so and, excited uh, for the community to see this exhibit when does it open and when can they come it'll be this uh, Thursday the uh, April 6 and it's from 6 to 9 and uh, like you say it's for the community this is about us it's uh, you know about life and uh, you shouldn't be ashamed of how you grew up you know some people may say well that's not very you know some people want pretty things in the walls i want okay. you know to paint things that people can relate to and that makes them feel good and proud of who they are yes this is so, a very special exhibit thank you for joining no, us this morning you. i'm excited for everyone to see a little bit more of all of these incredible pieces we're going to bring that story coming up on the noon show but we'll send it back to you for now Yes, it's very nice. Thank you, Tiffany. Thank you, Tiffany. Outside with live cam right now, this is what the clouds look like from below. And Justin's about to show us what it looks like from a geosynchronous satellite above. Uh, a good point. Yeah, the visible satellite pictures. We can start showing it this time of morning because we have some light to show what the clouds look like. And we can see some high cloud streaming up over top of South Texas this morning. We've also got some morning low clouds. But all this equates to mostly cloudy skies here for San Antonio right now. These clouds will break up some just like they did yesterday and we'll get into the sun this afternoon and temperatures will be just by where they were yesterday uh, in the low 90s. Hot, humid day. 72 right now. 74 New Braunfels, 72 Kennedy around Bear County. We're starting to jump into the mid 70s in places like Port S.A., Stinson sitting at 76 and Hondo right now at 73. Here's a look at the forecast. Noontime 82 by this afternoon. We're up around 92 for a high, but some places will be warmer than that. 97 in Pleasanton, 102 in Carrizo Springs and oh, by the way, yesterday, Cotua, hottest place in the country, 102, setting the uh, record yesterday. So uh, we know it will be hot. The good news here is we are going to get some relief within the next 24 hours. 72 at the airport right now in cloudy. Dew point is at 68 and we've got a good stout south southeasterly breeze. And that is out ahead of our storm system, which right now is spinning over the Rockies. This is going to uh, push east. Got a surface low right here that will work its way east, and that's going to create uh, showers and storms today uh, where uh, we're seeing already some storms across parts of Iowa, but even more forecast to develop, and it's going to be a pretty busy, severe weather day as this storm system uh, works east. There's going to be a dry line initially, uh, but that doesn't do a whole lot. Uh, it's this cold front that really starts to pick up the showers and storms and that goes into tomorrow morning. So this is going to kind of be an overnight situation uh, for many here uh, around the Mississippi Valley into parts of Missouri, a uh, dangerous situation. But that front does tail down into South Texas and we could see a few thunderstorms here. I'm just not expecting the amount of severe weather that uh, they're probably going to get along this front further north. So St. Louis, Chicago, Little Rock, even Dallas uh, could see some of these storms. The risk for severe weather does extend down just to San Antonio. We're on the tail end of things. Again, we could see a strong storm along the front, but it's not going to be uh, terribly widespread. So let me walk you through the forecast here. We'll fast forward to 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. Front's coming through. Yes, we do have some showers and storms right along the boundary, but that quickly pushes southeast by 9 a.m. A lot of the rain's pushing closer to the coast and it'll dry out. It'll be windy uh, for the second half of your Wednesday. Then things change again because uh, that front pulls up stationary. We start to get some disturbances rolling in and then rain chances will begin to pick up as we head into Thursday. In fact, I think the rain gets pretty widespread. There's going to be some good downpours in spots, uh, about a 70% chance of rain. And that'll be the case even going into uh, Thursday midday, 70% chance of rain, fairly widespread. That's also the case on Friday. So we're going to have some good chances here and that's not going to be raining the entire time. Uh, but it will be kind of off and on and there could be some heavier pockets. How much rain could we see? One to two inches potentially with higher totals uh, to our east. I think this corridor here probably uh, can expect the most rain, but even out west there's going to be some decent numbers, I hope. So uh, good to see the, at least the chance there for some widespread soaking rain. It has been so very long. 79 tomorrow with that early morning rain chance. 60 on Thursday, 60 on Friday, so much, much cooler. Uh, 30 degrees cooler than today uh, because of the clouds and the rain uh, does moderate over the weekend. 71 Saturday, 79 for Easter Sunday with a 20% chance of rain.
Uh, Justin, it looks like you put all your bags, eggs in one basket I there did, Sunday. Yeah, for okay. sure. Okay. Yeah. okay, just, okay. just want to check. We'll, we'll <laughs> take you. it. 950 yeah. and about 73 degrees. When we come back, we'll look at some of the new movies coming to theaters this month. The Super Mario Brothers movie is set to dominate theaters this weekend, but it's far from, it is far from this month's only highly anticipated film. CNN's Rick Damagella gives us a look at some of the other big movies coming out this month. Let's just take it all in. When's the last time you heard someone say something that interesting? Owen Wilson dons a permanent paintbrush as Vermont's leading public television artist in Paint. The happy little trees sprout in theaters Friday. Renfield, your sole purpose in life is to serve me. Now, let's eat. Dealing with a toxic work environment of having Count Dracula as a boss is just one of the storylines in Renfield. The horror comedy starring Nicolas Cage and Nicholas Holt definitely earned its R rating and creeps into theaters April 14th. We just be normal and regular like everybody else. Just please, 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 please. Judy Bloom's classic story of adolescence comes to the big screen in Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret. The coming of age comedy arrives April 28th. George should change his name from Four Man to Poor Man. <laughs> What's my name now, fool? Foreman is the new heavyweight champion of the world. The life of a boxing legend is portrayed in the extra large titled Big George Foreman, the miraculous story of the once and future heavyweight champion of the world. The film's box office battle begins April 28th. Getting an extra large popcorn in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Four games left for the Spurs. Yes, four. Tonight they play in Phoenix against the Suns. Late tip for us at 9 p.m. And then the next two quote unquote home games are up in Austin. And as millennials navigate their 30s and 40s, a new survey shows most of them feel positive about their finances despite the uncertain economic environment. But even though most millennials feel good about their finances overall, only a quarter believe it's possible to retire at a time of their choosing. Coming up tomorrow on GMSA at 9, we'll be speaking with a financial expert about what steps can millennials take to protect their financial well-being and where should millennials go for financial advice. Plus, it's a new science with Sarah. That's tomorrow morning, Sarah Spivey and her assistant, David Sears, will be out at Hoffman Elementary School doing two experiments with a group of fourth graders. Both have to do with space, so tune in for that and much more tomorrow on GMSA at 9. And right now we're in the mid 70s. We'll make our way up into the 90s later today. So it'll be a rapid warm up, but a cool down tomorrow after a cold front. Look for a few showers and storms tomorrow morning, then windy and cooler. And then have the umbrella with you Thursday, Friday. If you have good Friday plans, or at least if they're outside, you may want to think about maybe having an alternative plan just in case. Good idea. Yeah. Good. Yeah. yeah. Well, tomorrow I'm looking forward to the cold temperature, so I'll save the running for tomorrow. Sounds good. Thanks, Justin. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day. We'll see you back here tomorrow morning for GMSA at 9.